Bishop, good to see you. Uh, yes. Recently, you went out to Westbury, Long Island, and you uh, you said a mass uh, for uh, the memory of Monsignor Bernard Quinn, who died 75 years ago, and his cause is up for sainthood now. Uh, what was that like to go out there to, to see his gravesite and to you know to be right there yeah. where his eternal where well, his mortal remains are? It was the first time I had been out there and, and, and uh, see it was a very old church really that he was out there. It was his first assignment as a priest. He was buried behind the church, uh, so it was good that people from uh, the diocese came. Other people came. One of the good things is that people were coming who really didn't know about him, but they saw the prayer cards at the back of churches and came praying for. Uh, intercession for certain people that were sick or some other issue. So I think it was a very good thing. Yeah. People from St. Peter Claver and Bedford Syverson came out because that's he founded that parish, right. you know, group of black Catholics there. What is it about, and they really seem dedicated to him, I mean, they're devoted to this cause. What is it about what Monsignor Quinn did that impresses so many people? Well, truly, he was a hero. He, he was heroic in his fight to treat back black people as human beings as, as Catholics, potential Catholics. Some of them were already Catholics. Others, he, he, he converted. Uh, he saw human dignity uh, in all that he did, protecting the children, making, giving them a camp, giving them an orphanage when they were not able to live at home or their parents died. He was truly a hero to the black uh, Catholics of that period. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the camp, which is uh, out in Wading River, and it's the, it was the predecessor of Little Flower Children's Services. And that was actually damaged a number of times before they got on solid footing, yeah, right? That's right. It was the Ku Klux Klan was active out there in the, I guess, the 20s and the 30s. And they burned the place down twice. And he rebuilt it twice. So I think it's uh, a tribute again to stubborn endurance to say this is something good and we're going we're gonna to do it. Mm -hmm. What do we look for you know, when we, in, in somebody that we say is a saint? So, you know, what, is it, what does the church look for? Well, they're looking for something extraordinary. Now, a lot of people are saints, but they're not extraordinary saints. Uh, to be a canonized saint, we're looking for extraordinary holiness. One time I asked uh, uh, Monsignor Jervis, who is his biographer, I said, well, what was extraordinary about the Monsignor Quinn? He said, he said everything was extraordinary. <laughs> so in a certain sense, he did extraordinary good things for people socially, but also his, his piety, his spirituality was rather extraordinary. It was, he was under attack all the time. He didn't lose faith in the church. He never lost his temper. And one thing they said, he never spoke ill about anybody. So there was some elements of sanctity there that we've investigated and we can prove to show that he was an extraordinary man. Yeah. One of the marks of his uh, courage was that uh, these were practices that weren't necessarily accepted within the Catholic Church That's at the right. time, right? There were parishes around there that did not accept black people into their right. pews. And they didn't want him to establish that parish, so I don't know what they expected people to go. Again, there were Caribbean people coming up at that time already who were Catholics. They wanted to worship. They couldn't go to other churches, so they had to have their own place. It was a period when the church was establishing national parishes, so it wasn't so quite out of, out of line because people had parishes where the language groups went. So this was a, a cultural group that wanted to stay together, worship in their own way. So it made sense that, to do it, but people also were against it. Where are we at in the process uh, right now? Well, uh, we just completed the historical phase and it's ready to, be, to go to Rome. Uh, we're waiting to write one letter of cover letter. Then we'll have a little ceremony, pack everything up, all the documentation. We we'll send it off to Rome, and we'll see. Uh, the next step would be to make him venerable, from the uh, servant of God that he is now. That he would be venerable, and then it would be uh, bl blessed, and then saint. So we're, we're looking at the second uh, stage mm -hmm. now. And one of the things, uh, I mean, he was an extremely popular man at the time. And uh, I guess, did you see those pictures of his funeral mass when there were like 5,000, 8,000 people my turned my. out all around the church? There were, yeah. you know, crowds of people. So he was a very popular man at his time also. He was mainly because of the novena that he started to St. Therese of Lisseur, mm -hmm. which really attracted white people to come to that black, uh, black area of the, of the diocese. But there was, you know, great uh, intercession. Novenas were very popular in the uh, 20s and 30s. So uh, the, he attracted many people. That's how he supported the work he did, taking mm -hmm. collections up with those novenas. Sure. Well, thanks for bringing us up to date. I'm Monsignor okay. Quinn. Good. Yeah.